Hello everyone, my name is Vicki and I'm the Education Coordinator here at the Saskatchewan Sports Hall of Fame. I'm doing a series of uh, experiments to show you how STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math really relate to sport. Today we're going to talk about energy. More specifically, energy in balls. There's lots of energy in here. So would you believe there are three types of energy that could possibly happen with this ball and will happen with this ball? <laughs> the first one, if I hold the ball up really high, is called potential energy or the energy that it potentially has as when I drop it. So I'm giving it potential energy by holding it up high. As the ball drops, if I let it go, it's actually changing that potential energy into kinetic energy, which is the energy of motion. So I'm, it's gaining motion, okay? Or, or changing, I shouldn't say gaining. The energy is changing from potential to kinetic. When the ball hits the ground, it's actually generating a little bit of heat. So that's thermal energy. So that energy is changing from potential to kinetic, the energy of motion, than to thermal energy when it hits the ground. So we're gonna do a little experiment today to see what happens to the ball as that energy changes, okay? So if I drop this ball, and you'll notice here is our basketball inductee, Chris Beagler, who's one of our tallest inductees in the Saskatchewan Sports Hall of Fame at 2.01 meters or 6.7 inches tall. We're gonna try and drop this ball from the height of Mr. Beagler, which is about right, right around in here. As I drop the ball, it's going to bounce back up, okay? But what I want you to do right now is take, make a prediction. How far back is that ball going to bounce? Is it going to bounce back up to the same height as what we dropped it? Is it going to drop to about maybe my head level, my shoulders, my waist, my knees? How far back up is that ball going to bounce? I want you all to make that prediction right now. Maybe write it down somewhere so that you have proof of what your prediction was. So quickly write that down. And again, as I drop this, how far back up is it gonna bounce? To the same height, to my head, my shoulders, my waist, my knees, how far back up? Okay, hopefully you've made your prediction. So again, that's gonna change the energy from potential to kinetic to thermal once it hits the ground. How much? Okay, are you ready? I'm gonna drop it back. I'm gonna drop it down. Three, two, one. Now, if you were noticing, it bounced about up to this level, a little bit higher than our yellow line here. So that's close to my shoulder height. So it dropped back, it bounced back up almost to my shoulder height. So it only lost or the energy when it changed only went down about that much. Okay, let's try it again. Let's see if that was true or if it was just a fluke. Let's see what happens when I drop it again. About the same. Okay, and one more time. It's about the same. So that energy that's changing is coming back, uh, coming back up, um, to, a, to the level of about here, okay? So, we know that it's not losing energy. A lot of people think it is losing energy because it's getting less and less and less. It's just being changed. So, um, how do we put more energy back in it? How do we get that bounce back in the ball to the height that we want it to? What do basketball players do? They give it more energy. And how do they do that? By dribbling, right? So as you drop it and it gets less and less, you can add more energy by dribbling it. So that's the energy that's in this ball and why that all happens. There's all sorts of different reasons for what's going on, but that's energy. Now we're going to do one more thing. We're going to add a ball to this. We're going to add a tennis ball to the top of the basketball, okay? and we're gonna see what happens. Now again, I want you to make a prediction. So as I drop these balls, what's gonna to happen to each one? Okay, it, are they gonna to stay together? Is this one gonna bounce away? Is this one gonna bounce away? Like what's gonna to happen to these balls? So I'm gonna give you a minute. And again, I'll just do it in front of me because it seems to um, be 
well, you'll be able to see it a little bit better what happens when I drop these balls. Okay, so make your prediction what's gonna happen. So when I drop them, watch the tennis ball. That's the one I want you to watch as close as you can. I'm gonna drop them at the same time. One, two, three. I don't know if you could see that, but that tennis ball went wild. Because what's happening is the energy from the basketball went to the tennis ball. So the tennis ball had a lot of energy just to bounce all over the place. And we know how bouncy a tennis ball is, right? So what will affect the bounce, especially the, when we were doing this one and the bounce back up? A lot of things can affect how high that's gonna bounce. Number one is the flooring. So in our galleries, we have a, a very um, thin carpeting. So it's not like a tile and it's not like a thick carpet, it's kind of in between. So it's fairly solid. Um, but if we had a flat surface, like just a flat floor, a cement floor or tile floor, what would happen to that bounce, do you think? If we had a really thick carpet, what do you think would happen with that bounce back? What do you think might happen if we were outside and it was cold or it was really hot? How do you think energy might be affected uh, as it's transferred in this basketball? So those are things I want you to think about and maybe investigate with your class, okay? Thank you so much for watching our, this experiment today. Check back for more experiments coming soon.